what the heck is there to say that hasn't already been said? Now, as I talked about in the previous few videos, I was on a trip over the weekend, which is why all the videos that we uploaded on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday were all pre-recorded, just random topics talking about different things. We hadn't really talked at length about the current games and the situation in the postseason and everything, so this is going to be me playing catch-up. I wanted to talk today about the Battle of Alberta from the perspective of a Vancouver Canucks fan, because boy oh boy, the me watching these games today is such a different me than the me that sat down in front of game one and saw that Calgary Flames 9-6 demolishing of the Oilers at the hands of Mike Smith and Miko Koskinen. In fact, this series has been such a shift that for a portion of game two, the first few minutes in the period or whatever of game two, I was saying to myself, okay, yeah, Flames are going to sweep. It's going to be Calgary in four. They're going to play Colorado. Hopefully they win because my bracket said that they would beat Colorado. And then they'd go to the finals because, man, the Flames are just taking out the Oilers and they're extinguishing the flame that Edmonton had built for themselves after that game seven win over L.A. But dude, I didn't expect the Oilers to wake up and do what they've been doing to this magnitude. At the time of recording this audio, it's 3-1 to one Edmonton against the Flames. They have one win to go before booking their ticket to the third round and playing off against either the Blues or the Avalanche. Now, I know the 3-1 to one comeback is possible to overcome. We saw it earlier this season with New York against the Pittsburgh Penguins. It is possible. All it takes is a goalie who shows up and a team in the lead that ends up choking the bed. But goodness gracious, the Oilers have been playing these games in such a way that they sort of feel unstoppable in a way. Even if they get all the cards turned against them, even if they get themselves Mike Smith, who lets in a goal from 170-something feet from the Calgary Blue Line, you still have a team that is going out there and winning hockey games. We had said in a previous video that two of the winners, the heroes for Edmonton, happened to be that Connor McDavid, who was going out there scoring points like crazy and cementing himself amongst the best in NHL history. And, you know, it's kind of wild, but he just seems to be getting better and better as the series has gone on. Connor McDavid had himself yet another multi-point game last night in Game 4 against the Flames, and he is one behind Wayne Gretzky for the all-time playoff multi-point game streak, something like that. Like, it's so ridiculous just the amount of production that McDavid has had. He's had 25 points in 11 games this postseason, and he's getting better, as we said. The period of game, what was it, game three? Game three, the first period where Connor McDavid went pointless. I think that was one of the best periods that this guy has ever played in his gosh darn career. Like, you saw him going out there with the spinoramas and the control. Like, it's tough to verbalize just how good Connor McDavid is at playing the game of hockey with just my words. You have to watch the tape and see what this guy does when he enters the zone, cuts into the middle, spins over to the side, and then forces a lane on the outside to blitz by like three players. It's incredible. This is an absolute ballerina on ice, and I think NHL fans all over the place are spoiled just seeing the talent that he's able to go out there and display every night. Now, for me, personally, as a Canucks fan that had the Calgary Flames going to the Stanley Cup Finals and winning in my bracket, I was really surprised to see the Oilers take this step, take this lead, and actually have Connor McDavid unlock this new gear. Leon Dreisaitl also had, what was the stat that was posted up about him? The first player to ever score, like, four consecutive three-assist games in the playoffs? or three-point games, that's what it was. Leon Dreisaitl has been all over the place, too, and he's been doing this on one leg. My goodness, like, I said this in the King series, you know? In all the videos we made about the LA Kings and how Deneau was shutting down McDavid and everything, we said that the Oilers were a two-player team. Two players, McDavid, Dreisaitl, you need them to win, you need them to do their jobs in order for you to have a fighting chance in the lineup. And... You know, it's implied that that's a bad thing when you say, okay, yeah, you need two players to really help you win, but then you see what these guys are able to do despite that pressure, and you go out there and you say, well, that's it. That's kind of the series. I mean, 
The Flames, we thought the Flames would be in a position of power in this series because the Flames are a deeper team up front. They have the better goalie. They have the better defense. It should be a walk in the park for them to take the Oilers out to lunch and kick them to the curb, right? But... McDavid and Dreisaitl have compensated so much for that, not to mention Mike Smith honestly being okay. Sure, there are some gas that he really goes out there and you don't like to see. The Rasmus Anderson goal from yesterday was a pretty big heart-stopping moment for everybody in the hockey world watching the game because, oh my goodness, there was just a goal from 170 feet, Mike Smith let it up, now it's tied, and then Nugent Hopkins, guess what? He goes out there, he scores a goal later. Jacob Markstrom, definitely not playing his best in this series right here. Mike Smith says in the post-game interview, yeah, the goal on Anderson, I could laugh about it now, but that's only because we won. If the Oilers end up losing that game, it's 2-2, and then they lose like 4-2 in the series because that goal by Anderson was the turning point, you would not live that down for the rest of your life if you're an Oilers fan, because that would be on all the highlights. It would be the number one misplay of the year because of the magnitude of the situation, not just the goal itself, but what the goal caused, and you don't have to deal with that anymore. You won! It's 3-1, to one, Edmonton! And for me, a Canucks fan, it's so frustrating to see Tyler Toffoli go out there and not be as effective as we know that he could be. It's so weird seeing Jacob Markstrom just not make the saves that he needs to make. He's letting up rebounds, he's letting in low, high glove goals, and he's playing way too deep into his crease some nights. This is not the aggressive, antsy, just quick-to-the-puck Markstrom that a lot of Canucks fans got used to seeing over the past few years. And heck, this isn't the same Vesna caliber guy that was suiting up for Calgary in 2021-2022. I don't know what happened, but Markstrom is a completely different animal. Now, I don't know the ins and outs about goaltending, but maybe there might be some sort of psychological thing or some instructions that he might have been receiving. Okay, you've got McDavid Dreisaitl on the other side. These guys are really good at moving the puck around, so play deeper in your net so you're able to cut down those angles on cross-crease passes a little bit more. Maybe that's the philosophy that Markstrom has been trying to employ in this series, but it definitely has not been working. The guy's been giving up a whole bunch of rebounds, too. There are a lot of loose pucks in front. We saw the Nuge go out there and do his thing. What an absolute boss Ryan Nugent Hopkins is, by the way. Also from Vancouver here, so there's some representation. He has been all over the map under head coach after head coach after head coach, and now he's finally in a position to be a playoff quote-unquote hero 11 years after being taken first overall. Like, that guy has waited long enough for his moment, and he's finally getting it here. Still, he's being overshadowed by McDavid, etc., but like, come on. You gotta give the props to the game-winning goal guy when he gets the game-winning goal. Evander Kane has been scoring goals like crazy, too. How wild is it to see him go out here and have the redemption story of his career in this postseason as well? Everything just seems to be going right for the Oilers, and as a Canucks fan, it's difficult to see the Flames just fizzle away in this sort of way. Even with Tanev back in the lineup, like... I didn't realize how big of an impact Chris Tanev was going to have in this series due to his absence. Like, I know Tanev is such an effective defenseman, but when you see what was going on in Game 1, okay, 9-6, incredible game by the Flames to take advantage of Smith and Koskinen, who both certainly were not in their game. You had Game 2 and Game 3, where it was the other way around. The Oilers took advantage of Tanev not being there, and now... I mean, 3-1, to one, the Flames have to win three straight here. This was the top team in the Pacific, and the team that a lot of people, myself included, had going to the gosh darn finals and winning the cup. So, if Edmonton is ultimately the team that takes them out, honestly, I'm saying this as a Canucks fan, I hope the Oilers go to the finals. Firstly, that McDavid-McKinnon matchup is going to be fantastic. And that's me assuming that Colorado is going to beat St. Louis. Okay, it's 3-1, to one. it's going to be Colorado, right? But McKinnon-McDavid... With Makar and Nurse and Dreisaitl all there too, it's going to be great. And ultimately, I think the Colorado Avalanche, man, they lose all the time when it really matters. They make so much progress only to lose at the end. It's been kind of a trend for this team so far. But the Oilers, they're brand new on the scene. Connor McDavid is a man. He is a god amongst children and... Whoever goes out there and plays the Tampa Bay Lightning in the finals is going to have a really interesting series for sure. So, 
Talk to me in the comments all your thoughts about the Flames and the Oilers. The Battle of Alberta, these games are fun, these games are high intensity, high scoring, and that's all I've ever wanted out of these playoff series. So talk to me in the comments all your thoughts as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.